the school talks about being the business school for the world, mm. which is ambitious. Yes. Um, and of course, one of the steps towards that was, was opening up the Singapore campus 11 years ago. Um, wh what has that sort of changed in, 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 in the way that the school operates and, and what it can offer? Yeah, it's, it's really taken where we were you know, 11 years ago as an international but still very European school and just taken it to, to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, being a strategy professor, a uh, young strategy professor at the time we made the decision, um, the, the argument when we had the vote that really swayed me was, okay, we have this position as this international business school, which has been a great niche to be in, but now everyone's coming. Mm -hmm. How are you going to sort of raise the game and keep attracting the most globally minded participants. And I think just at a fundamental psychological level, being able to say, okay, we have roots in Europe and we're strong in Europe, but we're not a purely European institution anymore. I've got 40% of the faculty living in Singapore, in Asia, um, just makes a huge difference. I, I mean, how does it sort of play itself through? Is it in um, the proximity to those markets or um, access maybe to case study material? Um, well, I would go back to this idea, so yes, so sure, we have more people using Asian examples, more Asian case studies, but I, I would go back that a business school is fundamentally a platform for people to meet, mm. and it, it's about attracting first the faculty, so that a faculty that's one, interested in Asia, mm. um, that's then living there and experiencing that is huge, and same thing for the participants to really be able to say yes, these are participants, because you have to realize even in the compressed program, at least 75, sometimes as much as 80% of our participants are spending time on both campus. And it's, it's just about attracting the people with that kind of hunger to, to, to experience and be part of what's happening globally um, that, that, that makes it happen. And so that in the classroom, if you have those people and those experiences being shared, um, the rest just follows, right? The faculty then learns and sees examples and they bring that into their teaching, they turn it into teaching materials and case studies. Your colleagues in admissions um, uh, talk to that point in, in, in the uh, admissions process, um, asking candidates to maybe uh, describe a failure, but importantly, what they learned from that experience and the mm -hmm. self-awareness that it brings. Let me turn it around and ask the uh, Deputy Dean and uh, Head of Programs here, Yes. Uh, and a, a failure that you experienced. Um, so, um, this is why I think thing, although this is actually how I came to INSEAD, um, was I, like, like many people at INSEAD, there's often a desire for some transitions, transformations. And I was, um, as, a, as a young academic, becoming quite successful as an economist um, and was, had a, you know, sponsored to get my PhD by the, the National Science Foundation and was doing really well, but sort of inside it wasn't, didn't feel right. So that's when I, I sort of had this vague idea to take these economic theory skills and apply them to strategy. Right. And so that was my, my, my project. And um, it was much harder than I, than I anticipated. Um, so I, I was, you know, everyone could sort of see when I went on the job market, I was very bright. And so all of the top schools would have talked to me and sort of said, we want to have this person for a job. But then, you know, frankly, the, the early research I was doing, combining those, was not my strongest research. I'd done much stronger stuff in pure economics, and subsequently I've done much stronger stuff. And um, it was a real blow, I mean, just to sort of get out there and, and not be as oppressive as I, I thought I could be. And um, I, I think part of, part of my attachment to INSEAD is that as a school, they sort of looked at me and said, actually, that looks like a really interesting project. And we, there may be resistance in the field to taking this approach, but we'll bet on you. Mm -hmm. And because um, I think as, as much as we sometimes talk about you know, diversity and just in terms of nationality, what really makes NCAD work is that we tolerate diversity of thoughts mm -hmm. um, just across the community. And that gave me the space to sort of become who I, I became as an academic and ultimately had lots of opportunities to go to top schools in, in the US. But by then I was having too much fun and I just stayed here. Right. I mean, 
we talked about the idea that, of course, the, the, the melting pot of INSEAD brings together, uh, both on the faculty side, very international faculty with probably some very strongly held opinions. Yes. Um, all of these uh, bright, smart students from you know, uh, all over the world. Um, you'd almost expect it to create a, a sort of a flashpoint of, 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 of cultures. But how do they all navigate getting along together? Is there an innate mm -hmm. tolerance here? Well, I, I think it, yes, it works. Um, I, I sometimes wonder, what is it that we're doing that it does work so well? Um, I do think it, it goes back to what you alluded to in terms of the care we take on the admissions side. Um, in that, I mean, we, we look for many things, obviously academic achievement, so you can do the accelerated program, um, the, the potential as a leader, but also um, just the openness and the existing sort of multicultural dimension to who you are. Right. Um, so that, you know, people come here because they're genuinely curious to learn about what other, other people are about. Um, and that just, I, I think that makes all the difference. Mm. 